Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about how to customize Grafana alert emails. You know Grafana is an amazing monitoring and alerting platform and I've already made videos on how to use Grafana. I will leave the link of this playlist in the description so that you can check it out. I've made videos on how to set up alerts in Grafana and how to embed images in Grafana email alerts. But I got feedback requesting how to customize the Grafana email. I mean what's meant by that? You see by default the Grafana email looks like this. You'll have the Grafana logo, you'll have the Grafana alert folder location, you'll have the summary of the resolved instances or the firing instances and then you'll get the alert summary and you'll have some buttons to navigate to your Grafana dashboards. So people might like to customize this something like they want to remove the logo or they want to change the logo or they don't want the buttons to appear or they want some additional message to be appearing here. So that is what the customization we require in the Grafana email alerts. So how can we do that? By the way, the whole content of this video is present in this blog post and I will leave the link of this blog post in the description of this video. So please check out this blog post so that you can refer it to it later. Alright, so how can we customize Grafana alert emails? There are two options. One option is to edit the contact point message. With this approach, you can't completely customize the Grafana alert, but you can partially customize the Grafana alert email. And the second option is to edit the Grafana's backend alert template, which is a HTML file. With this approach, you can completely customize the Grafana email alert. All right, now let's talk about the first approach, which is editing the contact point message. So I've already installed Grafana and it's running. So I'm going to open it at localhost 3000. So I'm in my Grafana and let's go to the alerting contact points. And I've already made a contact point, which my alerts use, which is the infra team email, which is an email contact point. Let's try to edit this contact point. And here in the optional email settings, you have something called a message. If you leave this message empty, you will get the default alert message. And if you write something here, you will get this message instead of the default alert message. So let's try to write something here. So let's write something here like testing the contact point message. And let's try to save the contact point. And now if an alert is triggered, you will get a message something like this. So instead of all the alert details, you will get testing the contact point message but the header and the footer which is the Grafana logo and the copyright of the Grafana will not be changed. So with the contact point message field, you can customize the stuff between this header and the footer, but you can't change the header and footer. All right, we have achieved the customization, but you know, instead of writing hard coded messages, I also want to write some details about my alert. So how can I do that? So let's go to the infra team email contact point. And here in the optional email settings, I want to embed the alert details also. So how can I do that? Well, for that, Grafana gives you a facility of Go templating variables. So Grafana uses a templating system, which is a Go based templating system. And using the template variables, you can compose a message and Grafana will render the alert values in that message. So let's try to see what we are talking about. This is the official documentation from Grafana on how to use the templating variables. So I'm going to go to this link using Go's templating language. So this is like a simple guide to use their templating language. It's really awesome. You can just have a look and it's all filled with examples. So it's easy to understand. So let's try to quickly go through on how to use this Go templating language in your alert messages. So the whole variable should be always encompassed between these flower brackets and dot means the global context. So if the global context has a variable called alerts, you can write dot alerts and the alerts variable would be printed out. And if alerts is a list of variables, you can iterate over it using the range. So if you write range dot alerts, the whole section between this will have each alert as a global context. So dot labels means an alerts label. You can even write if else something like that. That means if there are alerts, you can write there are alerts, else there are no alerts. And then you can even change the global context very easily using the width variable. That means here in the example, instead of keeping the dot as the global context, you want to make alerts as a global context. So you're writing with alerts. That means within these sections, instead of dot, dot alerts is a global context. So this is how you can iterate over a list of items. And you can even create variables in this template language using this dollar sign. So dollar variable equal to dot. That means the global context would be stored in this variable. All right. Now you have a simple understanding on how to use the Go templating language in your alert messages. But how do you know what are the attributes which are accessible to your global context? That means there's an attribute called alerts and inside the alerts, there is an attribute called labels. 
how do you know what are the data types in this labels attribute to easily and interactively understand there is a simple approach in grafana open grafana and go to the contact points and here there is a section called notification templates just go to the add notification template screen and here they have given you an interactive workspace to create your notification templates let's try to go here and here you are given with some shortcuts let's try to write this here alerts loop so i'm gonna write alerts loop and if you click on this it gives you a simple syntax on how to iterate over alerts so using this you can very easily write the templates but there is still the question what are the attributes inside these alerts how do you know that there is an attribute called status how do you know that there is an attribute called status at inside an alert object how do you know this well there is a very simple cheat sheet given here it would be super useful just expand this cheat sheet and here you will have what are the variables present in a global context you will have alerts variable you will have the status variable you will have the group labels variable so if you have a alert notification these variables would be present and these can be used in your alerts that means when an alert is fired if you want to know the status of the alert you can just access the dot status variable and you will get the firing or resolved so this would be the alert status and if you want to iterate over all the alerts in this alert notification there's a variable called alerts and if you want to see only the firing alerts of this notification you can see alerts dot firing and if you want to access only the resolved alerts of this notification you can use alerts dot resolved so this way you have these variables inside the alert notification which can be accessed in this notification template and once you create your notification template you can easily use this message in your contacts point message so first let's try to compose our message here so in this alerts loop i am iterating through each alert and i am getting the status and and at what time the alert was started and the awesome feature here is you can preview your alert so if you click on preview there was only one alert in this example demo so for one alert the details are something like this the status is firing and it starts at this time now let's see what are the attributes you can have inside an alert so alerts is a list of alerts and if you hover over this alert object you can see these are all the attributes which you can have inside this alert you can even have the alert name which will be inside these labels you can have the status of the alert these are all the attributes let's try to use these attributes and enrich our alert message let's try to hard code some data also i'm going to write created from custom alert template so inside the alert you got the status and the start set let's try to write the name also so i'm going to write name and i'm going to use this dot labels dot alert name and if you preview this you got the alert name also and if you want to get the alert values let's try to print the values of the alert so the values of the alerts would be present in the values attribute the values of all the instant queries so the alert values would be present in this values variable which is actually a key value pair so we're gonna iterate over this key value pair and print these alert values so i'm gonna type range dot values and since i'm gonna iterate the key and value i'm gonna assign them to two variables so remember the variable can be declared using a dollar sign so i'm gonna write dollar k comma dollar v so key value equal to so i'm assigning each key value pair to these two variables so inside this range loop i'm going to have access to each key value pair here so i'm going to just print them dollar key equal to dollar variable so all the key value pairs of the alert would be printed here so let's try to preview this so i got my value also so my alert template is ready i'm able to surely say that this works i'm going to control a control c copy this alert message now it's not required for me cancel go to my contact points edit my infra team email and let's go to optional email settings and expand this a little bit control a control v so this is my alert message and let's try to finalize this contact point by clicking save and now our contact point is ready now let's try to trigger this alert and see whether this email notification works let's go to the alert rule and i already have an alert configured here i'll try to trigger an email from this so after i triggered an alert using this email template you can see the message something like this as per our template we got the first line which was hard coded which was created from custom alert template and then we got the alert values you can see that if it's a resolved message you don't get the values so here the values is redundant so to avoid this you can use an if condition here even in the go templating language guide there was an if statement which is looking for dot alerts so here i can write if dot values in fact i am finding it difficult to edit it here so let's to copy the whole message so again let's go to the context point screen let's try to add a template and in this editor let's try to create our new if condition so i'm going to write if 
and here I'm gonna write dot values so if there are values then only this would be executed let's get to give a small indentation here so that's it if there are values then only it would be printed and by the way they have also given a simple shortcut for alert details that means if you write something like alert details the whole stuff of the alerts can be printed something like this and from this you can choose what you want suppose if I want to print the labels I can just copy this and paste it in my alert message something like this so if I want to print the labels of the alert I can use this labels snippet so this way if you write alert details you can get all the snippets which can be copy pasted in your templates so if you want to print the labels you can use this if you want to print the annotations you can use this if you want to see the URLs you can use this so this way I have modified the alert notification to not write values if there are no values by using this if condition so I'm going to copy paste this and again I'm going to go to the contact points edit my contact point and then replace my email message with this so again I'm going to save my contact point and this time if I get the message I won't get the values if there are no values because I've used the if condition so using this approach you can very easily change your alert messages in case you want a very simple alert message and since I'm using the Grafana image renderer and I've enabled the image rendering I'm also getting the alert email with the image all right, that was the first approach to customize the Grafana alert email using the message input of the contact point. Now let's go to the second option, which is to edit the email alert HTML template. I mean, what did we mean by that? You know, the whole email is actually defined as a HTML template in Grafana. So we're gonna edit that inbuilt Grafana email template to customize it as per our requirements. So I'm in my machine and the Grafana folder it would be present in C program files Grafana labs folder and inside that you have the Grafana folder and public folder and emails folder and you have a file called ngalertnotification.html you know let's try to open it with browser first and then we will open it in notepad if you double click and open it in a browser you can see the whole rendering stuff here which can be easily understandable so basically they have created a HTML template and the value should be substituted in this HTML template to create the alert email which you are looking at. And obviously if you change the image URL in the HTML template, you can print your logo instead of this Grafana logo. And you can even comment out the HTML which actually displays this labels or the groups. You can even comment out the HTML which displays this alerts firing something like that. You can even comment out the code which displays these buttons. Now let's try to see the HTML in VS code and here is the HTML. So this is a huge HTML template which is being used in our Grafana email and before editing this in Visual Studio code, I highly recommend you to install an extension. So go to your extensions and write something like go template and here you got the go nightly extension which I'm currently using and this extension helps you to easily highlight the go syntax because it's a huge mess to understand this unit syntax highlighting. By default, there will be HTML highlighting and you can't understand the Go syntax highlighting. So go to the bottom right and select this and write Go template and select the Go dash template. Then you will get the Go syntax highlighting instead of the HTML syntax highlighting. All right, now let's try to remove the image from our alert. So if I write Control F and search for the IMG tag. Okay, this was not the Grafana image URL. This was the alert URL. Let's try to go again, Control F, IMG. So this is the Grafana image URL which is being showed here. I can copy this URL. This is the Grafana image logo which is being used in our alert template. You can even replace it with your company logo or something like that. Now the whole image is being rendered in this div. I can comment out this div here. I can just create a comment here. So this is how you create a comment block in Go. So let me try to remove this end here. And this div ends here. And you need to include this dangerously inject HTML also. So let's try to block the div here. So the whole div, all right, this dangerously inject was starting the table. So let's try to move it up. And let's try to move this up now I have blocked the image from displaying in the HTML so using this go comments you can easily remove the content instead of deleting and you know I, would, I don't want to even display this group labels name group alerts name also so I can just comment out this one also so I've started the block here and this div ends here so let's try to comment out this also all right now I commented out this logo and these folders let's try to comment out this alerts firing number of firing instances also I have commented out all the relevant sections where they display the number of alerts also. So let's try to save this template. Now I have saved my new notification template. The changes are ready, but before using it, you need to go to your services and restart Grafana. 
because the changes in the template would be reflecting after restarting the Grafana. And after you do your changes, the output would be something like this. You are not seeing the Grafana logo, you are not seeing the folder path, you are not seeing the number of firing instances, that message. Now your alert detail is on the top and the Grafana logo and that stuff is gone. In fact, let's try to remove these buttons also. So I have deleted all the buttons which were showing in this alert message, something like silence, view, dashboard, view panel. I have deleted the buttons, but in your case, you can even comment out the buttons. So one more thing you need to note is before doing the changes, just take a backup of this file, copy the original file, something else so that you can refer it and restore it if you want to deliver the original alert email instead of the customized alert email. All right, we remove the buttons. Let's try to restart Grafana. After restarting Grafana, I have changed the rule to fire again so that we will get an email for testing and we got an alert. Oh, I forgot to actually remove the message. You can see the header and footer are removed, but I'm getting the alert message because I did not empty the message. So let's go to the contact points, go to infra team email and go to the email settings and remove this message because if you have the custom message, the default message will not be delivered. Let's try to save the contact point. Let's try to change the alert state by changing the condition. So I have triggered an alert change. I got the alert message again. And here I can see that there are no buttons being displayed because we have removed that buttons from our message. So I've got rid of the logo. I got rid of the buttons. So this is a customized message which I've created from Grafana. You can even change the color schemes or insert some new logos, hard coded text, whatever you want, because you can fully control the message text using this HTML Go template. So this is how you can customize your Grafana alert email using the Go template HTML file. And lastly, if you make mistakes, in editing the alert template, the email will not be delivered. And how can you know that? Well, you will not get the email and you can even see the logs for that. In your Grafana folder, go to data, log, and there's a grafana.log file which will be generated. Open the grafana.log file in VS Code or any text editor. You can see the Grafana log which says that the alert was not delivered because the notification template is incomplete, something like that. I'm gonna show you a simple example here. You know, during testing for this video, I've made some mistake in editing the templates and then I got a log infra team email notify retry cancel due to unrecoverable error. The template is an incomplete template because I did some mistake in commenting out the opening and closing HTML tags. And since the template is an error template, I got a message something like this and the email was not delivered. So this is how you can debug if your alerts are delivering correctly. Go to Grafana log and search for errors which shows that the email was not delivered because due to some error in a template, something like that. So this is how you can debug whether your notification template is correct or not. So that's it guys. You can see I've created a blog post on customizing Grafana alert emails. I've given you the notes, I've given you the source code for example, and I've also given you the reference to the official Grafana Go template documentation to do further reading. So please be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or post your valuable feedback in the comments section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.